in the last video we talked about the half year convention and the IRS is going to crank it down a little bit more on certain businesses that acquire the bulk of their assets in the last quarter of the year because if they didn't do that, these businesses would get the benefit of a half year convention when really they didn't own much of their business assets for a full half a year. So the test that you have to apply is whether or not 40% of the non real estate assets that were acquired in a particular year were acquired in the last quarter of the year. If the answer to that is uh, yes, 40% of the assets they bought that year, non real estate, were bought in the last quarter, were subject to the mid quarter convention. And what the mid quarter convention says is okay, whatever, whenever you bought this asset, these assets during the year, you're going to treat them as though they were placed in service midway through the quarter that you purchased them in. And let's take a look at what that looks like in practice. We've got some assets from the Chavez Smart Build uh, Inc. company and they're telling us that they purchased tangible personal property. What they mean to say is tangible non real estate business property. So this isn't something that they're using personally. They're using it in business. It just isn't real estate. Um, and we've got 50,000 of it purchased in March and 225,000 purchased in October. So we say to ourselves, wow, October's in the fourth quarter and certainly well more than 40% of the assets acquired during this year were purchased in the fourth quarter. Uh-oh, we're now subject to the mid-quarter convention. And what does that look like? So if you flip to table 8.4 in your book, and we will take these pieces of the, these assets individually, we've got the March 15th $50,000 asset and so March 15th is in the first quarter and this is a five-year recovery period so we're going to and this is year one so we're going to look in at the first quarter year one five-year column and that tells us that 35 we can deduct take a depreciation deduction of 35% on the March 15th item or 0.35 uh, is our multiplier. For the $225,000 item that was acquired during the fourth quarter, year one, with the seven year recovery period, we are limited to 0.0357, so only 3% of this asset can we take a depreciation expense on in year one. We add these amounts together and that gives us our total depreciation for these two assets of $25,532.50. A couple of slides back reference was made to bonus depreciation and I kind of glossed over it because we hadn't really reached that point in the lecture, but here we are. Now, when I started off uh, the lectures on this chapter, I talked about the matching principle, which we're now about to violate, uh, where we want to theoretically spread the cost of an item out over its useful life so that we're matching the depreciation expense with the period of uh, revenue generation. Well, all that kind of goes out the window with bonus depreciation and the IRS provides some provisions for a hundred percent of the items depreciation to be taken in year one um, again totally violating that matching principle so bonus depreciation is allowed if you've got a property with a recovery period of 20 years or less computer software and certain leasehold improvements and what this means is they can write off a hundred percent of that in the year the item was placed in service. Now this hundred percent is temporary, um, the, well theoretically Congress can always extend anything but at the moment it is set to phase out starting in 2023. Now there's a presumption that if a taxpayer has property that meets this criteria that it will be applied. 
um, the taxpayer needs to make a specific election not to take the bonus depreciation. And so what this means in a sense is that for a small business owner between bonus depreciation and section 179 which we'll talk about uh, shortly they may not be in a position where they're depreciating assets business assets over time they may be able in fact between again, the bonus and the 179 to totally violate the matching principle but with the blessing of the irs and take uh, depreciation on the asset in year one that it's placed in service. When it comes to the depreciation of real estate, different rules apply and the rules for real estate depend on how that real estate is used. For example, if we have a an apartment building that we rent out to people who will reside there as tenants, we have a 27.5 year um, useful life. If it's commercial property, it's 39. Although uh, the, if it's ac acquired prior to 1993, it's 31 and a half. And we apply a mid-month convention to this. Although the mid-month calculation is taken into account in the maker's table for real estate. But basically what this uh, says is we're not going to apply the half year or mid quarter for real estate, they're actually drilling down to uh, mid month. Uh, but again, that is taken into account uh, in the, uh, the maker's calculation. So we've got Gwen here and they tell us that Gwen bought a residential triplex. The implication is that that's going to be rental property. She bought it in August. She bought it on August 1st for 290,000. That includes the cost of land of 50,000. What are the depreciation calculations for year one and year two? Now, hopefully you remember from your prior accounting courses, we do not depreciate land. So we need to back the cost of the land out of there before we start calculating depreciation. Now, we also know that because this is residential rental property, it's going to be 27 and a half year property and we will go to the table um, which is on uh, table 8.5 in your book and we will go to the year that she or excuse me the year the month she purchased it which is August uh, under year one we see that the multiplier is 1.364 for year one and that gets after we've backed out the cost of the land that gets us year one depreciation of 32.74. We go down a line to year two through 18 in the table, and that gets us for year two of $8,726 of depreciation. How do we de report depreciation? And the answer is form 4562 is the IRS form that gets attached to the 1040 that reports that depreciation. And I'm going to stop this video and move on to the next one for section 179 deductions.